Hey guys, how you doing? This is William Myers Mass Outdoors out here at the Maumee River with my buddy Joe Castle. Today we're going to show you guys how to build a wilderness loom and weave a grass mat out of it. Alright, so I, as you can see we have four stakes drove into the ground. I like to put them a little higher, at least two, three foot off the ground. And then there's lines from each side. So the two lines that we have going in this direction, then we have two lines coming off the back sticks here. And that is attached to one single stick that is actually going to be doing the operations of this. And all that we're going to do simply is just throw a line of tall grass in here down. Throw a line in, you'll see how it goes here in a second. But as long as we're alternating our sides, you know, if we go from the right side, next we go to the right side, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna bring everything in real tight. We're gonna have a nice mat when we're done. All right, so we went out and got a tarp and we laid a tarp down and we started collecting tall grass. We started laying that in the tarp and that way we could carry it to wherever we wanted to, uh, to go in big bundles. So when we're working the, the grass mat on a weaving, you know, we're gonna grab a nice handful and that'll, that's enough for a nice run right there. But you know, if you look at plants, they aren't just uh, one single size all the way up. You know, they start out very thin at the stalk and then they grow gradually wider at the top. So what I like to do is, <clears throat> I like to grab my handful, my run, and then I'll take about 50% of that and then I'll flip it. So then you have, you know, narrow, wide, narrow, wide. That way your mat doesn't kind of lean to one side, things like that. So this is a good run for a mat right here. Now this is a job that it's possible to do with one single person. Much, much easier to do if you have two or even more people. So I'm going to have Joe get from behind the camera and he's going to come over here and help us out. So as you can see, I already got that first run ready for Joe, so he's ready to throw it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up on this stick right here and I'm going to allow him to place that in between the two lines. Just like that. And then I'm going to come down on the right side. And then if I need to, I'm going to push down a little bit because now he needs to throw another run in between, and in between, in between. There you go. There you go. That's right. And then I, now I pick up on the lines, just like this. Now these first two, three, four runs, it's going to be seem a little loose, but once you start getting these in here, it's going to tighten up a lot. Now since I went down on the right side last time, I come down on the left side this time. The next time you come in, push those back. Okay, yes, sir. I don't know exactly if we've cut enough grass to fill out this whole mat, but I'll definitely give you guys a decent demo of how this is done. Since it went down on the right side or left side last time, I go down on the right side. And as you can see, the stick that I'm holding right here is far away from. The, the stakes that are in the ground, and you'll see that the stick push forward as we get this mat more laid in. Nice and snug. Yeah, quite a bit as you can see, be a little cantankerous to do this with one person. It can be done. What you have to do is fold it all the way over, put your grass down, then come back all the way down. It, it's just a lot com more cumbersome. <coughs> I kind of. Oh yeah, okay. Make this 
30 as possible. Running low? No, no. no. Didn't grab a very big handful that time. <laughs> yeah, you can even give her a twist or two to make it, make it a little more sturdy. Well, yes, I remember you saying that at class, that if it was a little thinner, a twist would just give you a little assist on weaving it through well, there. That and if you if you have smaller grass, I mean, we are lucky we're by this river, we have tall grass that we can work with. But if you don't have that yeah, tall grass, you're using with smaller pieces, then you got to twist all the grass together to make a, a run. That, yeah, and that's how we did it at class. Was yeah. we we uh we, we make it a nice together. thick one. This one, a nice good handful. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah when we did that one out the primitives class, yeah, it was a uh, smaller grass. Yes, much shorter. <laughs> I don't know. I think we will have enough. Go ahead and make oh, nice yeah. big runs. We got plenty of grass here, and you know you see. This mat, it's only probably head level to, to you know, maybe butt level. You know, but that's where you lose most of your heat from the small of your back and stuff like that, back of your base of your neck and top of your head. So if you were doing this to actually lay on, that would be fine. You know, if, the, if my legs aren't absolutely supported, I could just throw some, maybe some a little bit of debris down or something like that. Other than that, I'm not really too concerned about that. And once you get this run in here, Joe, really slam that stuff back. There you go. There you go. You can see, we, you know, there's no pauses or anything like that. It, do, it doesn't take very long, especially if you have two people doing this. It doesn't take very long to make a good three, four foot mat. Especially if you're not twisting small grass together. Yes, that <laughs> took, that did take, uh, that was a deal right there, buddy. Yeah. Doing the smaller grass. Like, again, as you said, being on the riverfront, you got the taller grass that runs the riverbed. So whatever it takes to get it done, all right? That's right. And again, you only, you only really have to protect your core, your core, everything else you can curl up in a ball. Well, I mean, I'm just like everybody else. I don't like when my legs are cold or my, you know, feet are cold or anything. My feet get cold, the rest of my body's going to get cold. But, you know, I can make a mat for my core and then just throw debris in for my legs or something like that. No big deal. That's a real small one there, but it'll work. Yeah. Yeah, that's too small. Yeah, you want to do it again? Let's fat that one up a little bit. As you can see... You know, this line, the sticks are already getting way closer to the uh, to the sticks here. In the reality, as long as you as long as you keep your core temperature up, you're not going to run into the issues with hyperthermia and frostbite, where your blood is running away from your extremities into your core to keep them warm. So they're going to protect themselves pretty well, anyways. As long as you're at least what Joe's talking about, dressed. yeah. What Joe's talking about is when you start to suffer from hypothermia, your core kind of gets alerted, and if you don't, the real important thing is that your core stays at the temperature. So it'll start taking blood from your extremities. It won't allow it to have blood, basically. And that's how fingers pop off in the in the snow. <laughs> yeah. Your body says, just keep the core warm. Oh man, we got. We got a lot of grass. Start making them real big then. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, Amy. That LT right overland, it cleared the house pretty well. And it, you said you haven't really put it to the stone since uh since the May class? No, I haven't really been. I don't I'm not really a big machete guy, you know, just kind of just sitting around, which I don't like either. I don't like things just sitting around, but I'm just not a machete guy. Well, you know, everybody had their fingers on it at, the, at the, the May camp. So it got hacked through a lot. Well, we even batoned a couple logs, logs with it just to check its <laughs> stoutness, yeah. so to speak. And, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Let me stuff, stack that a little bit better. So, you know, if it, 
And as you can see, this mat's starting to droop a little. So if you make your lines real saggy, it's just going to even be worse. You know, with these, these two runs, the main runs that go from stake to stake, I like to make them pretty tight so it gives a little bit of balance. Well, we caught up on our bloom. When we release this and we tie it all together, it's going to tighten up a lot more too. Yeah, remember we had to sit there with the shorter grass when you come across the shorter grass, you basically have to twist it all together to get it to stay, period. Yeah. Oh, we got a little stick in there. It's all right. That actually absolutely would work. Like you said, uh, you could easily use that to drape over, say, a debris shelter top. You could make it some kind of roofing material out of it, sure. But what I've used them more often than not for is for like enclosures, like doors, windows. Well, that, like that. yeah, that's what I was saying. You <laughs> cover your cover up behind you. Yeah. Well, what I'll do is I'll make uh, any kind of shelter that I have. I'll make two stakes that stick out vertically like this, and then I'll just put the grass mat on top of it. And then put lines around it so then when I'm inside, all I gotta do is pull a rope and my, my door kind of rolls up. Someone down. The river's got a fire going, I can smell it. Mm -hmm. it smells good. Yeah. Oh man, I almost wish you would have made a bigger make loom. It thick, make it thick, make it real thick. Be a pillow basically. Yeah. All the grass in this one. It'd be like almost a neck rest. And with the new Woodsman Thermo Rest. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can dial your sleep number in anywhere you want. This is my sleep number. <laughs> it's about a five. Grass mat. It's a five. <laughs> yeah. Now all we have to do is not cut, but loosen the knots that we have here. That's why I use very simple knots on these, because I want the slack and the slack from this so I can tie it all together and make it very tight. All right, so you know, we're just kind of resting this on my leg, getting a couple knots in it just to secure it. We're gonna do this on all four sides. Yeah, that'll be good. I'll throw one more in there just for good measure. And again, like I said, we're going to do this on all four sides. And that's just going to secure it all in. And then we'll show the finished mat. All right, so this uh, is pretty much our finished product. The only thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take the whole mat over to this log over here. And I'm going to kind of trim it up with my axe. Everything that I'm cutting right here will just stay right here, and then like a day or two, I'll come back, and that's my fire tinder bundle.
go, guys. That's our grass mat there. You know, very easily we could just kind of throw that down. It could be a city mat or laying mat or what have you. Like I said, it could be used as uh, doors, curtains even. The thing about something like this is it can easily be rolled up just like this. And right on your bedroll. Yep. That can easily be packed. It's not as lightweight as something modern, but yeah, honestly, I think this is more comfortable one. And uh, you, know, you made it yourself. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on making a wilderness loom and a grass mat. There's a bunch of things that you can do with them. You know, like, share, and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. Go to www.manusoutdoorsllc.com. There's a bunch of free knowledge there, free books and things like that for you to have for free and to, to learn from them. Uh, also, there's a shop tab over there. Go ahead and shop at the Amazon store. That I appreciated that a lot because it helps me and the channel out. And, uh, you know, as always, hopefully we'll see you out in the woods.